Today's patient is a 62-year-old Caucasian female that prevents that presents for two phrenectomies. First phrenectomy is between eight and nine. She's been restored there, and it looks like the um, papilla is starting to pull away. This is a Cotlow class three uh, labial phrenectomy, lip phrenectomy, and you can see at the where the arrows are is the base. You can actually, if you watch the base, you can see as the the revision is being made that the tissue releases. I'm using a light scalpel CO2 laser and this is cutting with light. The tip never touches the patient. Here I'm assessing the amount of freedom I have after my initial incision. You can see I'm really not happy with it. I'm going to make a slight incision to the left and then to the right side laterally to give me a little bit more freedom. There is no bleeding. Um, with the CO2 laser it instantly cauterizes as you're making the revision. So I'll test it here and just make sure I have the release I want. And this has been a really nice release so I'm happy with it. I'm gonna move on down to um, the number five area where we're gonna do our second uh, phrenectomy. You can see I'm checking and double checking. That's just partially because I'm OCD and that's how most dentists are trained to double check and recheck. Even with me touching the incision site, there's there's no bleeding. So our second phrenectomy is over here um, in the area of number five. You can see the tissue is very definitely pulling away here. She doesn't want the same thing to happen between eight and nine, which is another one of the reasons why we went in that direction. You can see very definitely there's some tension that goes all the way up to the attached um, attached gingiva. So I'm going to make a real small incision here and you can see the tissue below it uh, just releases and lays flat and so um, I'm going to go in here and make a couple of uh, releasing incisions um, make it a little wider laterally at, at, at one position you still see that there's some tension there it doesn't look like it's quite where I want it next to the injection site where I got her numb Go slightly posterior here and then slightly anterior and now it's released even more it doesn't really look like there's any tension pulling on that uh, uh, the attached gingiva so I brought her in for a post-op visit to just see how healing was occurring and you can see that um, yeah, this is within normal limits. Uh, it looks just like we left it pretty much, although more healing has taken place, obviously. And then go over here to the number five area and see how the tension is. And essentially, looks like there's a little bit, a little bit of uh, reattachment there, but it's certainly nowhere near what it was. And this is absolutely, I would consider this as a success. And um, I'm including the post ops on here just because. Uh, when I started doing this, I would see docs showing the uh, the surgeries that they were doing, but I could never find any post-op videos like, okay, what does it look like at the post-op visit one and post-op visit two? So this is her second post-op check. You can see um, much more pink here, good incision, good healing. Still um, healing occurring here at the second post-op visit. Let's check our other site. So great healing has taken place here. You can see this looks a lot different than our, our pre-op video. A lot less tension, a lot less movement. And if it had looked like this originally, I probably wouldn't have treated the site to begin with. So great healing and thank you for watching so much.